Morning, Emma. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. I am so excited. Oh my gosh, you're getting the Pink Panther. <gasps> that is so cool. And I absolutely love starting my mornings this way. It is just so much fun hanging out with you, just starting the day off right. And I am super excited. And I am going to just, you know what? This is just, what can I say? I'm just super excited about all of it. Okay, so we are, what are we doing today? Today we are finishing my makeup. I am going to be um, finishing my foundation and I'm going to be giving just my tips and my suggestions on how you can make your foundation absolutely be your best friend. Because I'm going to tell you right now, your foundation is either going to be your friend or foe. It's either going to enhance your makeup look, enhance your face, or it's going to age you and make you look um, older or in some cases it won't match your skin tone and it can just really throw you off. So today is the makeup day. AJ, yes, I am super excited about that. Good morning, Tiggy. All right, so before we get into the whole makeup, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to talk to you for a little bit with half of my makeup on. But um, as I was already talking um, to TikTok, I want to just mention that um, video that I posted yesterday with all those really cool older ladies that had all of their faces tattooed, they had their necks tattooed, full on sleeves. And I had a lot of people be like, oh, well, those are AI generated. And to me, it doesn't matter. To me, it was just the whole representation of what I'm going to look like when I'm older. Because I have to tell you, there's not a whole lot of representation of that. And like I was saying yesterday, a lot of times when you go and you look for those kind of images online, it's almost like a mockery, like, oh my gosh, look at this, look at that. And so it was really cool to see that and not only see that, but just have the outpouring of so many people being like, oh my gosh, the energy is amazing. They're bad, you know, they, they just have such a vibe. And I absolutely agree. And Courtney, yeah, you know what? If you want to AI me and, uh, you know, and just make me look cooler, I am totally okay with that. Tiggy says, I worked at Sephora for many years and my daughter works at Ulta. I can help anyone with skincare and mature skin, um, et cetera. <gasps> Very cool. So Tiggy, today when I'm going through my whole thing, if you have any suggestions or if you have any comments, absolutely by all all means you know just pipe in and let's let's keep this this conversation going so okay so i want to tell you really quick um you know what is it to me it, it's i saw this um i saw this when i was getting ready and i was like doing my little research for my um for my subject but i want to know your opinion on something and it, it's just to me it's just kind of like a weird thing but I saw that Al Pacino Al, Al not Al Pacino but Al Pacino is Al Pacino yeah am I saying his name right I think I'm saying his name right but anyway he's gonna be a dad at how old is he he is 83 years old and you know what I don't you know what I have no like oh he should or shouldn't but to me the question that I started thinking is um you know what that's it, it, it's so weird because as a woman as an 80 as an 83 year old woman I could not imagine having another kid I mean I'm 58 and I could not imagine having another kid so I just thought it was just kind of an interesting thing and kind of just wanted to know your take on it I mean for you as it is kind of like head scratching is me so I don't know. It was just kind of like one of those weird kind of things where I was just like, huh, okay, each to their own. But I just don't know if I would do it. I mean, I am absolutely 100% looking forward to grandchildren, but I 100% don't want to be raising my own again. I am still, you know what? I, yeah, no, my, my child raising, rearing days are far from over or far over, not far from. All right, Tiggy also says, I also bit the bullet and put a shorter guard on my clippers this morning. Okay, 
So what is your take? Do you do you like the shorter clipper look or do you like it a little bit um, or do you like it a little bit longer? I personally like the little bit of a shorter clipper look, but that's just me. To me, it's like if my hair gets any longer than this, um, I just I feel like it's it's too much of like, I don't know. I don't like it any longer than this. Um, Jamie says, I don't have patience for kids now. No, I really don't. But I know that some people do have children later on in life. And like, again, each to your own. But I 100% could not imagine having a child at 83. 100% I could not imagine. But again, whatever, each to their own. Um, Claire says, no, he won't be around when the child grows up. You know what? I really thought about that. And, you know, I really thought about like, um, about the kid, you know what? It's like my, my sons, um, don't have a good dad and, um, they don't really, they didn't really get to reap the benefit of having a loving father in their life. And I kind of thought about that a little bit when I thought of his age, which is, you know, again, I'm not going to cast judgment, but I kind of thought about the kid too. Um, Courtney says, I am an auntie only and it's bliss kicking them out of my car at the end of the visit. Yes. You know, it is so funny. It's like my dad, um, when we would come over to visit, um, he loved us very much, but even for him, it's like, he would be like, hey, uh, don't you have somewhere you need to be? And I'd be like, oh, not really, Dad. I kind of wanted to hang out with you. He's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm sure you have somewhere to go. So he was always like, when his patients were up, we got kicked out. And I think being older, then that would be something. Tiggy says, my parents were older and my kids missed out because they were gone. It's sad. Yeah, you know what? My parents were a very monumental um, part of my children's lives. So had they have not had that, it would have been really sad that they didn't have those role models. Um, Courtney says, it upsets me you have an ex that treated you and the boy so poorly. My heart is, your heart is too pure. You know, yeah. And the thing is, Courtney, is it's like when I think about things like that, it's, it's, I have two ways of thinking about it. And one, I refuse to give him any ounce of my energy um, two, it's like, um, I feel bad because I thought I was giving my kids a good dad and I didn't, but I refuse to partake in that kind of way of thinking just because, like I said, he got too much of my energy and he just doesn't get any more. So, um, sorry, no negativity. I'm bad. No, you know what? And it's not negativity and it's the truth because there are a lot of people out there who go into relationships and they go into marriages with the best of intentions. You know, I don't think anybody goes into any relationship and has kids with the intention of ever having it not be that way. So sometimes, you know, marriages break up and both, both parents can um, parent their children together in a really loving way. And I think that that is really awesome. Unfortunately, again, that was not the cards that we were dealt with, but I think, you know, in the end, um, being that he is the person that he is, it was better for them that they have no contact with him. So, you know, that's the way we kind of, that's the way I look at it. And that's the way that they, um, that's the way they look at it. Uh, B says, same. I thought I chose well. Yeah. You know what? I still remember when I got married and I still remembered, you know, in my mind, I was just going to be like, this is going to be the happiest little family ever. And it just, like I said, the cards did not end up that way. So best of intentions. And the thing is, is I got two great, I got two great sons out of it. So that's the way I like at it. All right. So I'm sitting here and I still have my little, um, back brace on. If you don't know what this is, this is um, a little device that I got off of Amazon. And what it does is it pulls my shoulders back because I, and I say this all the time, I'm always like, I'm going to tell you. And as I'm talking, you know, I'm going to tell you because I'm talking, but it was really bothering me. It was really bothering me when I was looking at my own videos and my shoulders were hunched over and my posture was terrible. And what I started doing is that's one of the reasons why I started going to the gym is because I wanted to work on my core and start standing up straighter because I don't want to have that hunched over look. 
So I was working on my core and I was like standing up straighter, but my shoulders were like this. And I was getting like that little hunched over lady look. I mean, that is exactly what I thought every time I looked at myself. And I'm like, nope, you're not going out, you're not going down that road without a fight. So I went on Amazon and I got this little device and it pulls my shoulders back. And I did not realize how bad of a posture I had until I started wearing this. And I'm not going to, you know, it's in my Amazon store if you want to check it out, but it doesn't have to be that brand and it doesn't have to be anything in particular. But if you're struggling with your own posture, I'm going to tell you right now, um, I'm getting one the second I heal from radiation. Um, yeah, Courtney, it's been a huge difference. And the reason, and it was weird because when I first put it on the first couple of days, it was digging into my armpits because my my posture was so bad and now it's like my little pits are like stand up straight Lonnie otherwise it's gonna hurt and I find myself even without this that I have much better posture so it is um, definitely definitely if it's something out there that you're struggling with I say do it and um oh okay so donna what this is this is just it's like a little strap let me show you it looks like i'm wearing a backpack but i'm not because what i'm wearing is just this and the intention of it is um yes and the intention of it is to pull my shoulders back because I sit here and I edit videos all day long. I'm always on my laptop. I'm always on my phone and I'm always having this posture. Okay. Doop. And so what I'm doing is, is I'm training myself to do this. When I went to yoga, um, when I used to practice yoga daily, they used to talk about like chest opening where we automatically hunch forward and we need to open our chest and put our shoulders back. And this is, yeah, no, my back. See, I have scoliosis. And if you don't know what scoliosis is, it's a curvature of your spine. And my curve of my spine is right between my shoulder blades. So with my bad posture and my hunching over, I was putting all this extra pressure right where the curve went. And it was causing a lot of pain. I mean, I was in constant back pain. I woke up with back pain and even sitting here just for an hour and thank you, Diana. And even just sitting here for an hour and on this hard bench, um, my back would kill by the time I was done recording. And now I got to tell you, um, it, it doesn't hurt. It, it was weird. It was like when I first put it on, it felt good and hurt all at the same time. Now it just feels good. So that is the um, that is the explanation of that. Diana says, I have a congenital spinal disorder too. Yeah, you know what? When I was younger, I got diagnosed with the scoliosis when I was um, 16, 15, 16. And I almost have, um, I almost had to have surgery back then. But for some reason, I had a growth spurt and my spine straightened up enough that I didn't have to have the surgery. But I know that my mom had back surgery when she was in her 70s. And it was so hard on her that I don't want to go down that road um, that I am just 100%. I'm going to do whatever I can now to just keep a good posture so I don't, I don't have to do that. So anyway that's that okay so let's see we have been talking now for almost 15 minutes and I have not put a stitch of makeup on can you believe that I have a tendency where I have a gift to gab and so I I'm half the time I'm just like la 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 forgetting that I have a subject so let's get to going oh really quick see here I go I'm gabbing again um I am in Southern California so it's supposed to be warm. And I'm going to complain one more time about the weather. It is going to be 64 degrees today as a high in Southern California. And I don't know what's going on. You know what? There's weird, wacky weather everywhere. But I am start starting to get a little um, 
starting to get a little discouraged with this overcast cold weather. So I purposely did really super bright eyeshadow because I want to, um, I want to be bright. I want to just kind of like give myself a little, um, give myself a little sunshine. So I, I picked a super, um, super pink eyeshadow. Okay. Tiggy says, gosh, I would love 68 degrees. So my question to you is, um, do you consider that hot or do you consider that cold? That's not hot in the UK. See, 68 degrees to me is like fall or winter. And I am used to, I mean, in the summer, um, during the hot spell in the summer here, we'll get up into like 100, 115. And that's like the hot summer months. But right now we're supposed to be in the 80s and we're only in the 60s. Oh, you live south of Houston. So you probably have a lot of humidity also. So, okay, so you're probably hot, whereas I'm complaining about the cold. <laughs> See, and that's just the thing. And I was getting ready and I'm like, oh my gosh, Lonnie, no matter what the weather is, you're going to be like, I want it to be something else. So I decided that I am, I just wanted to let you know how cold it is, but I'm not going to complain about it. Um, Let's see here. Diana says we're going to be in the 80s all week in Ohio. See, I almost would love just a couple of days of 80 degree weather and um, and kind of get like that good sun. And um, that would be awesome. OK, so you live south of Houston and the AC is on the fritz. My air conditioner went out last year during the super hot where it was like we had almost three weeks of weather that didn't go underneath um, 100 degrees and my air conditioner broke. It's a brand new um, air conditioner and I couldn't understand why, but I had a really cool guy. It was just a simple fix, but I absolutely, my heart goes out to you because I know what it's like to have your AC broken on super hot weather and it's not fun. And the thing is, is I don't mind hot weather during the day, but I wet night when I'm sleeping, that's when I like it to be super cold because even in the summer, I like the, my room to be cold so I can pile blankets on even in the summer. Um, let's see here. I'm loving this. I get to wear my new dock set uh, and not overheat. You know what? Yes. And I heard, Courtney, that we're supposed to have a little warm up over the weekend and then we go back to being cold. So um, that is, we get a little bit of a break from the cold and I'm okay with that. So, all right, so let's talk about the foundation. Now I'm gonna say right now, and I've said it before, but your foundation can either be your best friend or it can be your worst enemy. And the reason that I say that is because your foundation is either gonna give you a youthful look or it's gonna make your, uh, it's going to make your wrinkles more predominant. Now, I never go into my whole makeup routine with the idea of this is going to make me look younger, but I'm going to tell you right now, I don't put my makeup on hoping that it makes me look older. I want my makeup to just basically um, make my... Um, my features, I want it to flatter my features. That's what I'm trying to say. So I found when I was doing my makeup, I would, I love doing eye makeup. Eye makeup is my favorite makeup to put on. And then I would put my foundation on and I'd be going out in the sun and I'd be like, ugh, what is going on with my face? It was like all dried and cakey looking. So I was like, no, this isn't going to happen. You know what? This isn't, this isn't an okay look for you, Lonnie. You might look fine in your bathroom, but the moment you walk outside, it is not okay. So I kind of went on a little journey to figure out what was the best way for me to apply foundation with my skin type. And what I have found out is that um, foundation can actually like dehydrate your skin. So if your, your skin has any sort of tendency to be uh, on the drier side, you have to absolutely make sure that you get a foundation 
that is moisture based. Because again, if you take something that is going to dry out a skin that's already dry, you're, you're going to make your skin look like clay and that's not good. Now, if you do have a drier skin, I'm going to tell you right now, I am all about slugging and I've said this and I, I talk about slugging a lot and I've been meaning to tell you all about this, but I went for my monthly uh, facial on Saturday and I was talking to my esthetician um, and um, Eau Claire, I'll tell you right now. So I was talking to my esthetician and I'm like, hey, guess what? I have been slugging. I have been putting Vaseline right on my face. And she's like, yeah, she goes, that's awesome. She goes, I do that too. And I'm like, you're kidding me. And she's like, no, she goes, it's a great way to just lock in that moisture. And so if you don't want to put Vaseline straight on your face, she also recommended Aquaphor. And we all know how good Aquaphor is on your tattoos to make them shiny. You can also put Aquaphor on your face after you moisturize it. And then that way it will lock in that moisture. Because what happens when we get older, our face, our skin automatically stops making collagen. All right. Now, if I'm trying to be technical here um, and um, OK, Claire, I'm going to tell you why you need to switch that. So um, our face automatically stops making collagen. And then that way it, it kind of just gets like that more of a not a full plump look. If you start locking in that moisture at night, it's going to hold that moisture and it's going to give it a fresher look. So starting off your foundation, you have to make you make sure you have hydrated skin because it's going to just make your skin look nicer and it's going to make your um, your foundation apply much better. Now, Claire, the reason that I do my eyes first and not my foundation is I used to do it the other way around. And what I found is if I put all of my foundation on, then I went to go put my eyeshadow on any of the eyeshadow that was like the overage that was getting stuck under my eyes, when I would go to remove it, I was smearing everything over my foundation. And so I would remove the overage, but then it was like, ugh, you know, you kind of have to rub a little bit more than you had to put your, yeah, Tiggy, exactly. And then I had to reapply my foundation. And another thing that I have learned through my makeup journey is that the eye area under here, we need to treat this very carefully because we get the automatic like little fine lines and wrinkles and then we can get like a little bit of bagging and some dark circles. And the more like we rub on it or if we treat it roughly, it, the more it's gonna break down the skin and we don't want that. So I try to avoid any sort of like overage of like, constantly wiping underneath my eyes. So that's why I put my eye makeup on first. So when you are doing your foundation, I suggest, and this is just what I have learned and this is just what works for me, but I suggest putting on your foundation in light layers. If you put too much foundation on, if you're really heavy on the foundation, if you're trying to cover those wrinkles, you're not gonna cover them, you're just gonna have too much foundation on your face. So I like to think about putting everything on in real fine layers and just building my foundation. If you have any sort of red spots that you wanna cover, this little green foundation is great for covering red spots. This really works. I got this foundation and, or this um, primer from e.l.f. and I put it all over my face and then I put my foundation on top of that and it looked like I was nauseated. So I, I just had like a green undertone um, coming out from underneath my foundation. Hello, Tracy. So I think this stuff really works, but I suggest if you have like little red patches, just to put this on the red spots, I personally would not use this as an all over um, primer. 
And then also too, if you do have dry skin, um, I highly suggest using a moisturizing primer. This stuff is amazing and I could almost use this as a moisturizer on its own. Now, I don't have dry skin, so when I do use this, it almost makes it feel like I have too much moisturizer on. So I will save this for the days that I might be feeling a little dehydrated or during the summer where everything kind of dries out. But get yourself a mineral infused primer. I absolutely love that. Now I am going to be using a primer and the one that I'm using is the Poreless Putty Primer by e.l.f. And basically what this does is it gives you, oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot my mirror. So I'm going to be doing this um, using my camera. My foundation always goes weird on my nose. You know, I'm going to tell you, getting one of these little itty bitty sponges and just using this and then where's my other thing? <laughs> oh! Using a little sponge like this and then also using a little contour brush like that has helped me apply things underneath my eyes and around my nose. So I put this all over. And what this is going to do, this is just going to help my foundation stay in place, which I want. And it's going to very lightly fill in any fine lines or wrinkles. But we have to, have to, have to, have to, and I cannot say this enough, but we have to get the idea of covering our wrinkles out of our mind. We are not, if we are not going to cover them, it's just not going to happen unless you just go super, super heavy on your foundation and your primer, but then you're going to have like a real thick prime or foundation on your face. My idea and the way that I do my makeup is to just kind of keep it like a moisturized look and um, not making them stand out any more than they already do. So I just start with a primer. Again, either a color correcting primer, a mineral infused primer, or one like this, just a regular old primer primer and I get that all over my face and it just sits there. So we're going to leave that there. Now again with the ideology of building your foundation in layers, I'm going to put on next what I want. Yes, sunscreen. Sunscreen's right here and I always wear sunscreen and I um not going to lie to you, I did not put on any this morning because I'm not leaving and the sun is not showing today. In fact, it's misting a little bit. But if I were to be going out, I would have put on some sunscreen. And the one that I really like right now and the one that I have been wearing a lot is the Woe Glow Sunscreen from e.l.f. If you are in an area where you have any sun at all and you're going to be going out, put sunscreen on. Sometimes the foundation will have sunscreen built in, um, but okay, I like I said, I'm not going to lie to you. I could have been like, oh, I put my sunscreen on before I came on, but then I would have been like, that's dishonest, Lonnie. You have to keep your platform pure, so make sure you wear sunscreen. Thank you, Tiggy, for reminding me. Okay, so building in layers, moisturizer, um, sunscreen, and then you have your primer. So now what I want to do and now what I suggest is that if you want any sort of um, underpainting, this is the time to put it on. And by that I mean this is the time where I would put on any concealer that I want to put on, any contouring I want to do, and I also put on my, um, my blush. I put all of that on and then I'm going to put a, a thin a thin little foundation over the top of that. So with that in mind, what we're going to do is I don't contour every single day, but I am going to do a little contouring today just to kind of give you an idea. And what I'm using is the Halo Beauty Wand, Beauty Wand, and this is the contour. Super easy, and I'm just going to contour a little along my nose. I'm going to put, boink, 
a dot right there and just lightly on my cheek and that's it that's all i'm going to put that because i don't want to go too much but you can absolutely put as much contour as you want and that's just going to build up some cheekbones it's going to change the shape of your nose it can do all sorts of different things and we got that and then what i do is this smaller brush I will go in and I will just make sure that this is all blended in. And again, it kind of gives me a little bit of contouring on my nose. Make sure that that dot's done. And you just have a little bit of a contour. Now here's where it's going to get fun. This I have been experimenting with since last week since we did the unboxing. But this is the stuff that I got from the Pleasing Company. And this is a liquid, um, this is a universal cream pigment. And I'm going to tell you right now, this stuff is um, potent. This stuff is so like in your face, but it works perfectly for, again, the underpainting. Let me show you. <laughs> I need a little shot of coffee for this one. Watch what this does. Okay. I've learned, I've learned it, that it does not take much. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to put like such a tiny amount. And I'm going to go boink, boink, boink. All right. Maybe just a little bit more, but just watch. Let me just do this side and then I'll figure out if I'm going to do more because I just have on that little bit and this is what this little bit will turn into. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, this stuff is strong, but this is going to give me the look that I want underneath my foundation. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, Kelly says 84 here in Ontario, Canada today. I I'm melting just went with eyeshadow, eyeliner, mascara, and lip stain foundation and contouring and blush would have melted and run off. Yes. And the other day, the other Sunday, I actually um I didn't go anywhere and I didn't put on any makeup. And sometimes I absolutely like the non-makeup look just as much as I like the makeup look. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. It's, I'm using my little laptop as a mirror. So putting this on, hold on. <gasps> I just had a technical error. Okay, coming back. So I definitely don't want that much. Oh no! Okay, hold, please talk amongst yourselves. Um, darn it. Okay, this is how much this stuff stains. And it is, while it's really cool, I gotta tell you, it's really hard. It's really hard sometimes to actually work with. So let me get my stuff all back together because I am having a makeup meltdown right at the moment. Let me put this here like this. So that way I have just a little bit of a mirror and we're gonna go back in and we're gonna do this the way I said. And we're gonna dot, 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 dot. So I have three dots on both sides. All right, so makeup meltdown. And it is going to get super bright. And I know it's gonna get super bright because I do this every single day. <sighs> Heavy sigh, because this is gonna be okay. How about them Padres? Absolutely, thanks for, thanks for filling in for me, Courtney. That's why I love you. 
So we are going in, and we are pat, 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 and it's getting crazy. And it's like, oh my gosh, what is she doing? She looks like a clown. Why would she do that? And I'm going to show you why I'm going to do that. So I just want to make sure that the little dots go away. Because I got a dot right there, dot, 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 dot. So if you think like I'm a makeup expert, if this doesn't tell you I'm not, I don't know what will. And also too, if you think like I'm shy and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to only show them something if I'm perfect. This right now, I'm telling you right now, I'm not like that. This is, this is makeup 101 at its rawest. Okay. So I put on that, um, what's it called again? It's called a universal cream pigment. You can also use this on your lips. Um, just under paint it. <laughs> I am Courtney, be patient. Okay, so there. So I've got like my crazy kind of like pink thing working on. Now here's where it's gonna get fun. Uh, the foundation that I have been using a lot lately and I absolutely love is the L'Oreal Power, L'Oreal Paris 24 hour foundation. This is the Infallible Pro Glow. Okay, I, I love this one. And the shade on this one is Natural Buff. All right, because I am naturally buffed. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. All right, now we're going to go in. And what I do is I put the foundation right where, you know, put it on my forehead, going to put it on my cheeks, put it on my nose. And then I get that kind of all blended in. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm, not a whole lot, just kind of getting it to do its thing. And another thing like I have learned from doing my makeup on the internet is that you don't want to rub, you want to pat. So you want to treat your skin very nicely and you're going to go pat, 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 just like that everywhere. Okay. So then I get my little blending brush and I'm like, blend, 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 blend. See how that's working out? Don't worry, I'm gonna cover my clown cheeks. Now I'm going in with my makeup and I'm just gonna dot, 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 dot. And I'm gonna put that right over my little pink spots there. And it, in theory, what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to give you kind of just that glow of where you have that natural kind of glowing cheeks. Right now, it is still a little pink, but we are working on it. And I get a sponge and I just go in and I make sure that this is all done. All right, so let's see what it looks like. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to cover you guys up. You're like, where'd she go? And that's how I do. It looks really weird on my phone, but on the camera, it looks good. And in person. Now, sometimes with that really heavy pigment, what happens is that it kind of goes in places that I don't want it to go. So I'll just kind of buffer it out if it goes a little bit too high. And that's how I do my underpainting. If sometimes like on the underpainting, I have used other blushes to where it's like it covers up the pink with that really heavy pigment you can still see it under your foundation but if you do want to add a little bit more this is just my regular brush that i put my found or my blush on 
And I'll just kind of give it an, uh, an extra couple of little pats just to kind of give it that little glowy look. Now, I'm not done yet because there's still just a couple of things that I like to do. Another thing that I like to do is that when we get older, our um, skin has a tendency to get a little dull. And what I really like is I like to keep it um, shiny. And I always wore matte makeup before I started my little makeup journey. And what matte makeup does is it basically makes you look like your skin is dull. And I personally wouldn't recommend it. Um, I wouldn't recommend a matte makeup, not, not at my age, because again, it just kind of makes it look a little, it makes it look dull. Courtney says it looks amazing though. Isn't that the coolest thing though? I mean, it's not, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not an easy product to work with. I have had to basically um, figure it out and I still have little oopses. But once you have that on and you have your foundation over the top of it, it is absolutely amazing. So what I like to do is I like to give my skin a little glow. And I do have an e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand and this is in rose quartz. And what I'll do is I'll just add a little bit more shine to my face, which to me is kind of funny because I used to try to cover it up. I used to do the matte thinking that it was just making my skin look oily where I have now changed the way I think. But what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit on my forehead. I'll go down my nose and then I go underneath my eyes because again, we want our eyes to be bright, not dull, and um, it just kind of gives it a little bit extra shine. So I'll go in with my brush and, oh wait, I forgot where I put it. And I'll just give myself a little extra, little bit right there. Again, I went down my nose. I'll go underneath my eyes to brighten them up. And there we go. And another thing I like to do too is that with this halo glow, I will put a little bit on right underneath my eyebrow just to kind of give that a little bit of a pop and make it go a little bit higher up. But that's what I do there. And one more thing that I do just because I can is I like to put on just a little bit of bronzer. And I use the powder bronzer on this one. I told you not to, that I don't use a powder brush, but I do like a little bit, bit of a powder bronzer because I think it's a little bit easier for me to put on and it's not gonna give me that drying out look. So what I do is I put it right along my forehead because you wanna think about your bronzer like um, the sun is beating down on you and it's kind of giving you that little sun-kissed look. So you just put it on, and again, along my forehead, and then I cover it on my neck. There you go. Courtney, I absolutely love underpainting, and I think you will too. And the thing that I really like about underpainting is, is that when I was doing my, um, my whole makeup journey, I was doing the contouring but what I wasn't blending it in enough and I was going out and around the stores and I'm like, why do I look like I have a stripe on my face? And I was just walking around with these really bold brown stripes. And I'm like, no, Lonnie, that's not the look you want. You want more, you know, you want it to be contoured. So I find that putting things underneath your foundation is much more forgiving than putting it on top. And it has allowed me to be much more um, free with my experimenting, if that makes any sense, because I feel like I can hide it with my foundation. So the trick there for underpainting is that you want it to be bold enough and bright enough that you can see it underneath that foundation. And again, get yourself a, like a pigment, get yourself a really heavy cream, 
blush and that's going to be the key for your blush now um the other day when i went to uh gosh where'd i go old navy remember when i went to old navy and i was standing in line and i got the sugar scrub from elf well i've been using that and i actually like the sugar scrub it is really cool regardless as to what brand you get get yourself a little sugar scrub you know keep your lips nice and um nice and sugary scrubbed and it, it seems to help a lot now i'm gonna finish with my um my lipstick that i have absolutely um i don't know on soul i didn't know oh yeah old navy yeah i was like trying to de figure out what you were saying courtney yeah it's um they actually it was really weird when i was at old navy when i went to go check out and buy that skirt i bought um they had snacks they had first aid kits they had water they had elf makeup they had the most weirdest variety of stuff that you could buy when you were trying to get to the cashier so it was a very random thing that i found but um, i'm really glad i did because i really like it so let me see if i can put this on with like uh no mirror and another thing i've decided to do is i'm going to wear um, my lips a little bit darker so i i cannot talk and put this this on my upper lip so hold please mm -hmm. <laughs> talk about pressure i like oh my gosh it's like lonnie don't laugh and every time i tell myself not to laugh of course i end up laughing but i'm trying not to laugh right now which just makes me want to laugh even more ah I can't find my lip. Oh, right, where, where are you at? There you are. Okay, I got the other. I got the other. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, go Padres! Oh, uh, there. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. But I am absolutely loving the darker lipstick especially with the buzz cut and the gray hair i think that where i was making the mis where i felt like i was making a mistake for me is that i was like fading away i was becoming very muted with my makeup and it's absolutely the time that when we are older that i think that going in and being bold with your makeup is a really cool statement because it's so contrasting with the grayer hair. Um, Jamie Lynn says, hello, my friend. Love, I love this look. Thank you. You know what? Like I said, I have super bright pink eyes on today. I had to actually, um, I had to actually tone down this pink because I put on the eyeshadow and I'm like, whoa that is really pink and so why i did is um i used like a little bit of the white shadow and i toned it down claire says why are you using darker lipstick i'm using darker lipstick just because i find personally um i love a nude lip but what it was doing to me is that the nude lip was actually making my teeth look not as bright um, red lips, a, a red lip will make your teeth look whiter. And what was hap, this is bugging me. Uh, and what happened is, is that with the lighter lipstick, it was kind of just washing me out. And, um, I found that I, again, when I got to be a certain age, I felt like darker colors, bolder eyeshadow, that entire makeup look was for somebody else. And so I was shying away from that. I was using real like muted eyeshadows. My brows um, were kind of just non-existent and especially my lipstick. And I have very much embraced the darker lip, even a blue lip, something like that. It just kind of, for me, just pops it out even more. And I go back and I look at some of my videos that have the um, more of the muted lip color and I can see my coloring changes a little bit. So I like a darker lip just because of that reason, just because I think it's bold and it just makes everything pop even more. And <clears throat> so, yeah, but 
I think lipstick, you know, eyeshadow, lipstick, it has to be what you're comfortable with. And I know myself, it's like sometimes I'll, I'll try something new and I'm just not comfortable with it. And somebody else could be like, oh my gosh, that looks great on you. But so long as, I mean, it really matters how you feel about it. Now, a couple of things that you want to stay away from when you're looking for your foundation, you want to stay away for me personally, you want to stay away from a powdered foundation. It's a powdered foundation is just going to make your skin look even more dry. So when you're picking a foundation, I say don't go any heavier than a medium coverage. And you can actually look into something like a BB cream. Now this foundation that I have to me is a perfect blend of like right in the middle because it's like you can get a BB cream. This is real light. It has just a light, light, light coverage. This one is going to just soak right into your skin and this is a great light coverage. Then if I want to do more of a full coverage, I'll go in with this Flawless Satin Foundation. This is a heavy coverage and I can see the difference how it's laying on my skin. Then this little one right here, this Infallible Pro, Pro Glow is right in the middle. I think that it has just enough coverage to not be the BB cream, but not be really heavy and laying on my skin in a weird way. So find yourself a medium coverage and I like that it has that glow. I cannot say enough how we have to just stay away from those mattes and go with more of a glowing kind of look. Now, I also too do my brows before I put on my foundation because what happens is a lot of times is like you'll put on your foundation and you'll put your foundation right over your brows and then you go to put your color in and you're putting your color over the top of foundation that's on top of your eyebrows. So I'll go in with my, I actually use two right now. I first will go in with, where are you? Where'd you go? <sighs> what are you, oh, here it is, it's right in front of me. I go in first with the Thicket and Stick It, and this one is a colored, and it kind of does like the little microblading, and I will be very aggressive with this. I will go in and I'll just be like, doink, 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 and then I'll go in with the brow glue and I will put that exactly where I want it to be. So I do two different brow products and then that way I have the brow, the eye, the lips, and the cheeks. And however you wanna do it is perfectly, but I absolutely say that you need to just have fun, be bright, be bold, just do fun things with your makeup. And if you don't like it, wash it off and try something else. There is just absolutely no rules or regulations that I think you need to follow with your makeup at any age, period. So remember, less is more when it comes to makeup. And this is how I do my foundation look every single day. And it's just something that I like. I like how it looks on my skin. And there you go, there you go. So that was fun. And I think on um, Wednesdays, we're gonna keep Wednesdays kind of like makeup, skincare, kind of stuff like that. So if you have any suggestions or if there's any questions that you have or any like products that you want me to try out, by all means, let me know and we will incorporate that into our Wednesdays. Now, I am working on a couple of videos. The one that I'm working on for today is I went down to Free People and I went to the big store. And here's the thing. It's, it's like when I was in the Free People store, I went to the Carlsbad one and then I went to the one at University Town Center. And when I went to the Free People store, I kept on hearing all of the, everybody talking about the big Free People store in San Diego. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this magical free people store? And um, it, it, I'm like, it's gotta be just magical. I keep hearing about it. 
So I drove all the way down to San Diego to Fashion Valley and I went to the Free People store. And little did I know that there was actually two stores. They had a full Free People store and then they had a full Free People movement store. So I actually ended up doing two videos. I did one in the regular store and then one in the Free People movement store. So I have those upcoming and I'm gonna be putting those out this week. Then I am going to be doing another shop with me and I think I'm gonna be doing it a little bit differently. And what I'm going to do the next time I go to Marshall's, cause we are going, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do, I, I'm always thinking of things, but I'm going to do a Marshall's versus TJ Maxx in the same day, all right? I'm gonna go to Marshall's, I'm gonna take a look around and then I'm gonna go straight over to TJ Maxx and I'm gonna compare. And I'm going to see what the difference is. I mean, do they have better things? I mean, how's the store layout? So I'm gonna do, a, again, a Marshalls versus TJ Maxx challenge. But when I go into the rack, I'm gonna film at the rack too because that's just what I do. I film all day long. I decided that I'm going to do, instead of just being like, hey, here's what they have, I'm gonna actually build outfit for outfits for you when I'm there. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to be like, this is what's at Nordstrom's right now or Nordstrom's rack. You can take this top, this skirt, this shoes, this purse, put them all together. It's going to look like this and it's going to cost you this amount. So I'm thinking I might just change that up just a little bit to keep things fresh because you know what? I'm always trying to keep my content fresh and entertaining. And I on Monday here live, we are actually gonna do some cooking. And I've got it all worked out in my mind how we're gonna do it. We're gonna be right there. I'm gonna have everything set up and I am gonna cook my favorite um, meal for you. And that meal is the maple sriracha cauliflower bowl. So we're gonna make the cauliflower. We're gonna have avocado, rice, edamame, I'm gonna show you how I make it, and I think that that's gonna be fun for Monday. So we have so much coming up. Tomorrow is going to be the 13 essential items that um, Emma says, you are so gorgeous, lady, inside and out. Love you from Ireland. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Um, so what we're going to do is, tomorrow we're gonna to talk about the 13 things that you need in your closet. We talked about cleaning out your closet last week. This week, we're gonna talk about the things that you need in your closet. The 13 essential things that are gonna always be in style, they're always gonna be on trend, and we just need them in our closet. So I know what the 13 items are, and I'm gonna tell you out of those 13 items, which ones I do have, which ones I need, and if there's any that I disagree with. So that's tomorrow. And then don't forget on Friday, we have Q&A again, which is super fun. I love that one because Courtney always comes in with like a bunch of questions. I already have questions that I get throughout the week. So we are going to be doing that on Friday. Friday is all about Q&A. There's no like presentation, there's no subject. And the subject is, is like, what do you wanna know? And maybe we'll throw a story time in because you know, I got nothing but stories. I was thinking the other day, as I was um, just messing around, I'm like, man, I got some cringe-worthy stories. Like when I was younger and wild, and when I was in my um, drinking heyday, your girl here did some pretty crazy stuff. So one day we'll have story time, and I'll tell you about all my misadventures of my past life. And... And part of the reasons that I share these kind of things with you is because I think it's really cool to see where I was as to where I am now. Because a lot of times we always think it's like too late. And before I got sober, I was like, why get sober now? I mean, it's like I've already been drinking this long in my life. Why would I, why would I bother getting sober now? And had I listened to myself... I would be miserable. And the simple fact that I can sit here in front of you and be happy just absolutely just reiterates the fact that it's never too late to change your life. 
because I got to tell you, um, you would not have liked cringy drinking Lonnie. She was not a very nice person. So I wasn't nice to myself, but I definitely wasn't nice to other people. So, you know, it, it, just remember, it's never, never, ever too late to start making those changes. Come here. Come here. You want to say hi? Come on. Indy's right here. I know you can't see. Come here. Now you don't want to jump up. You're always jumping up. You want to jump this way? Come on. Here's Indy. Indy wants to say hi. No. Say hello, everybody. No, you cannot eat that. She, again, is such a good girl. I love my peppers. And we always, like I said, we always go for, don't lick my arm. We always go for a walk after I'm done with my uh, live show. So I, um, she he always hears me wrapping up and she comes in and she's like, hello, Mimi, are you done? <laughs> Kelly says hi. Kelly says hi, Andy. Hi. Yeah, Claire, you know what? I wasn't a nice drunk either. But to me, it was, it was just part of my journey. And I have a lot of people, it's funny, it's not really funny, but I have some people who are like, you're inspirational, what's all that about? And the thing is, is that, I mean, in my past life, I would not have been inspirational, but people do change, and I think that I have changed for the best, and that allows me to have like a unique story to share, and it's something that I absolutely love to share. So, yeah, I, 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 like, I like my story. It's pretty cool. So that was it for today. I absolutely, I know she's such a good puppy. I absolutely hope that I gave you some ideas on your own makeup, Courtney. If you have any questions, just ask. Um, have fun. Just, again, your makeup is your self-expression. Just have fun with it. And if you don't like it, wipe it off and try something new. But I'm going to take off. I'm going to take my puppers for a walk before it gets cold. It's supposed to rain today. Don't ask me why. It's supposed to be summer. And I will see you tomorrow with the 13 items that we all need to have in our closet. So I will see you tomorrow. Remember, be bright, be bold, be brave. And I will be back tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right. All right. Ah, gotta come this way.